Hang on a second. They wanted a target, right? People shoot at beer, uh, beer cans all the time. be able to become the best shots in the camp. So now you're saying this rat isn't a rat? No, I'm not. My name is Michael. Hello, Michael. They're easy to convince. <laughs> so tell me, why do you want to throw rocks at those soldiers? We have to get revenge. We're big boys now. And that's what we gotta do. Those pigs shot our dad. We heard him screaming. He's hurt real bad. Mom said we'll never see him again. Damn pigs! My brother and I are gonna get them. All of them! But when they were dad's friends, you used to say you wanted to be a soldier when you grew up. Shut up! That was before. I wish I could reach those watchtowers with my rocks. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Something tells me that a little commotion along the barbed wire fence would be a good thing for everyone. Yeah, except if these kids could reach the bar the towers with the rocks, they would also get shot by sniper fire. It's pretty late for kids like you. What are you doing out in the street at this hour? Hey, we're not kids. We have to practice our marksmanship. Our mom gets real mad when we do it inside the house. It's not like we have anywhere else to go in this dump. Nowhere else to go? So you don't go to school? Don't you have any friends from school? There is no school. Not since the explosion. Our mom says we don't need it anyway. We're big boys now, and someday we'll be very important people in the camp. Just like our dad. That's why we don't hang out with the other kids around here. Our parents say they're rats. They'd be a bad influence on us. Yes, we're going to be brave and strong, like our dad. Right, Michael? Of course you will. I'm admittedly not great with accents, but do the two of them... Do these two kids have completely different accents from each other? I think they might. I need your help, boys. How can we help you, Michael? I have to get something from inside your house. It's something I need so that I can help your father. Understand? But your mother is very agitated. And I need you to give me a hand with her. It's a mission. What do you want us to do, Michael? I need you to get your mother out of the house for a few minutes. Just long enough for me to go in and get what I need. Do you think you can do that? Of course, we're big boys. I'll owe you. I promise to give you a reward. Okay, let's do it. A mission. <laughs> we gave up on the whole food idea pretty quickly, didn't we? It's almost a little dark. Alright, well I guess I'm just gonna have to starve then. Who needs trust when I can just steal? Not. Knowing what's inside that room, I have no interest in going in. Oh wait. Okay, they got him out of the room. That'll probably give me the I can get the cigarettes, and then I can probably use that those as payment, perhaps? For alcohol? And then trade the alcohol for access to the girl? I was gonna say just use those for access to the girl, but perhaps the uh... It just seems that they would, it would be used at the bar instead because the bar set up the idea that they barter. Ha, <laughs> get it? Barter. Alright, so... Oh, post-looting mess. I'm just looking around for any final details before I leave because I haven't necessarily found everything. Okay. So the whole distraction oh, was- my head! Uh, what the hell's going on? God, my head feels like it's gonna explode. Michael, please, help us, help us. Please, remember, Beechwood Oracle. Repent, it's the sun. Was it our fault? Did we do it? Yes, we did it. Enough, uh, please, enough. Please, Michael, help us. Only you can do it. Remember. Beechwood Oracle. Good God, what are these images? And that woman's voice. It's the same one that woke me up in the trailer. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. And stop tormenting me. I hope Rod helps me find some answers. If not, I'll go mad. Absolutely mad. Well, that took a turn, didn't it? 
That's the missing ingredient here. This doesn't just feel like shard like it's shard light. It feels like shard light crossed with uh, with oxen free. That's where we're going with this. Interesting that it'd have a cross section between two of the adventure games I've played. I've just, I haven't played that many yet. Uh, let's see if I can trade. Let's see here. Cigarettes. Those goons demanded money from me in exchange for letting me into the van. They aren't going to be satisfied with just an open pack of cigarettes. What about whiskey? The whiskey's supposed to be rare, right? Better not. If these guys are unpleasant sober, I had to imagine them drunk. Alright, so this is not a fix this for me. Alright, let's just go around until I find somebody to trade with then. Uh... Hello, inhabitant. I prefer to hold on to them. I'm sure I'll be able to find some way to use these cigarettes. I prefer to hold on to it. Nope. Thought that maybe he, it might be a surprise, like you give him something handy and then, oh look, he's had surprise th stuff that's helpful to you too. By the way, I noticed that we had those like animated boots at the beginning of the game that like all carefully drawn, but the moment I put them on, they just turned into little triangles on my feet <laughs> to fit with the art style. Once the, when they're environment, when they're in the environment, they have less detail. Greetings, pal. What's this? Are you proposing a trade? Because if you are. You came to the right place. What do you need? Liquor? Cigarettes? Food? I'm still interested in that box of food you offered me. I brought you this. Let me see. It's a good brand of whiskey. But the bottle's been opened, and there's a lot missing. I'd take it, but I'd need something more. I have this pack of cigarettes. Fantastic. I think that's a fair price. I'll take both of them. Here you go, pal. The food package is all yours. Enjoy it in good health. All right, well, that, with that kind of trading, I was talking about Oxenfree Free and Charlotte, now I'm thinking about uh, this war of mine, of course. Just the specifics of, like, food, alcohol, and uh, cigarettes being traded back and forth at different quantities and stuff like that. That was such a big part of my play style because I went so far into trade that it's eventually I wasn't even going out at night anymore in that game. Well, that wasn't too tough. The box says, Government Rescue Campaign. Sales of these foodstuffs is prohibited. I have no doubt whatsoever. The hunter and his men must have lost their scruples in the Great Wave. That is, if they had any to begin with. Here, this is what I promised you. That's all the food you brought? This will barely feed us for two days! I'm sorry, it's very complicated getting more in the camp. I only wanted to show you that you can trust me, that I can help you. That's what all you rats in this trash heap say? But in the end, only thing you're interested in is taking advantage of my husband and me. I've held up my part of the bargain. Isn't that proof enough? Listen, let me have that pass to get out of the camp, and I promise I'll come back with the morphine you need to ease your husband's suffering. Ah, okay. But you better hurry. Here. What's this? A bracelet? It's like an ID badge. Wear it and the soldiers will recognize you. It won't just get you out of the camp. It'll also help you avoid all kinds of problems with the army once you reach the city. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing by giving it to you. Just don't betray me, you rat. Bring me that morphine from my husband and I promise you, I'll give you lots of money in return. Much more money than you could earn in a lifetime in this shithole. No, that's not necessary. We never said anything about money. I have to know you're coming back. I don't trust any of you. And I know that money is the only thing that'll make you keep your word. All you camp rats are alike. Now get out of my sight and don't make me regret this. And don't come back without my husband's morphine. There'll be a fat wad of cash waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> the money would come in handy. It'd, go, it'd be, give us the ability to get into that truck at the very least. All right, so mission accomplished. We've got the bracelet we were going for. I gotta say though, the dialogue's already stilted across the board a little bit, but damn, she might be the worst voice actor in the entire game. Like the to from everything from the tone of voice to the line delivery, like everything's just kind of off with her so far. It's an ID bracelet that identifies me as an army collaborator. In other words, a mole. Wearing one of these brings certain privileges. Among others, it's my key to getting in and out of the camp. It'll come in handy, just try not to wear it uh, in too many places or you'll get ID'd as a mole in front of people you don't want to think you're a mole. 
Hey guys, this wasn't too tough, huh? Go through that gate, and I'll blow your head off with one shot, rat. Hmm. Do you need to get a closer look at what I had on my wrist? Wait a minute. Look, he's got on one of those ID bracelets the camp moles wear. Those cockroaches are very useful to us in here. Lower your gun and let him leave. You heard him. Get out of here, rat. All right, I guess we're just going to go on a long walk now. From here, I can see how the road leading out of the refugee camp splits into three paths. One leads to a kind of depression in the ground, another leads to a graded water outlet, and the third disappears into the distance, beyond the last hill. Could that be the road leading to the city? You can see bits of clothing caught on some stretches of wire, and even strands of hair. Someone got fence scalped? That's a bad time. What's your deals? Can I go in, into both of these areas? A few yards away, I can see a great mass of trash, mud, and plant matter that accumulated in there in the years since this water outlet was last cleaned. Blah. Even from here, I can smell the stench coming from inside. Thick bars at the end of the pipe block the opening to the outside. Extremely hard and solid, I'm afraid. In the distance, the other end of this tunnel fades out of sight among the shadows. Hmm. Where does it lead? That might be all we get here. So there's a tunnel around. Get the feeling that might come up later. Especially if they drew a close-up camera angle for it, too. It's a charred remains of a tree trunk, fighting to keep from being devoured by the enormous hole in the ground. For the moment, it's holding its own. It seems firmly rooted in the soil. It looks like there are some chiseled stone structures sticking out of the water. What are they? The remains of columns, perhaps? And what are they doing sunk here in the middle of nowhere? Hmm. It seems like a small fragment of one of them is loose. This hole in the ground is steep walls of mud and earth. The distance to the bottom is several yards. How the hell was this cesspit formed? I suppose the rain has been flooding the pit little by little. This water is so dark you can't even see the bottom. That's about all we're going to get here. All right. We'll see if these locations come up later. They seem noteworthy. They, they, they took the time to draw those separate sketches of them and everything. But the obvious path forward is, this, is the uh, city. Let's find out if it's any better than this nightmare we've so, been in. I enter the city. It welcomes me with its most merciless and bitter grimace. What I see before my eyes is not what I expected. Doomsday made it here, too. Even if no one in the refugee camp knows it yet. Damn it. The city looks as bruised and battered by the catastrophe as the rest of us. Yeah, somehow being in a place called Doomsday City does not bode well for us. So everyone's kind of screwed. It's just... There's a bit more of a horrifying uh, enforcement of people's lives in the previous location. Ah, that could still be here too. We'll see. There's no wall around it though. The traffic in this part of the city must have been especially heavy. But now, you can barely hear the sound of the few army vehicles still circulating in the surrounding areas. I wonder if I'll, have, if I'll have a reason to knock that down or something at some point. Just seems like an oddly noteworthy thing the way it's moving around. Three people warming themselves by the fire. They stare into the flames as if their thoughts were also burning in that rusty old drum. Alright, getting weirdly metaphorical about the whole thing. Judging from what remains of the stained glass windows and the murals, this pile of rubble must have been a place of worship before the great wave struck. Now it's one of the most badly damaged buildings in the area. There are hardly any walls still standing. It looks like this heating technology is not limited to the refugee camp. These bonfires are used here too, and their emissions are just as toxic here as they are there. What the hell could they be burning in them? What the hell is that old man trying to do with that enormous pair of bolt cutters? <laughs> he can hardly get his hands around them. You could help, potentially. 
Also, hello, ruined church. Definitely thinking of shard light now. Post-apocalyptic post society, weird military force controlling everything, a sickness that's sweeping around that the main character is probably infected with, and then a ruined church that you can go into that probably has some plot significance. This game actually has a lot in common with, with Shard Light. Kinda wonder which one came out first. Help me, please! Help me! Don't let them find me in the street after curfew. They'll take me to the refugee camp. Help me, please! But don't make any noise. There's a patrol just round the corner. But what is it you need me to do? It's almost curfew. I need a place to sleep. I need a place to hide, or they'll send me to the refugee camp. Don't you understand? What is all this about a curfew? At curfew, the soldiers want the streets cleared. And the way they see it, if you're out on the street after curfew, it means that you've got nowhere to go. You don't have a home. You don't belong here. And that makes you a rat. And so they take you to the refugee camp. I can't go to the camp, understand? I can't go there. You need a roof over your head, and you don't have anywhere to go. I used to, but it doesn't exist anymore. I owned an apartment a few blocks from here. The block was badly damaged by the Great Wave, but it was still standing. And what happened to your home? This morning, we had to evacuate the area in a hurry. We ran out in the streets with whatever we had on. Apparently, the foundation was starting to crumble. And a few hours later, all that was left of my home was a pile of smoking rubble, with 40 years of memories buried beneath it. But I can't let them take me to the camp. I need to get into another house before the curfew. Please, help me. Okay. Give me those bolt cutters. I'll see what I can do. This house is empty, but the army has sealed it off. If I can just get this padlock off before curfew, I'll be safe. I need to get in here. But please, don't make too much noise. If the soldiers find us, they won't hesitate to kill us. Possible. I'm sorry. I can't do anything with this. I need to get in there. I need to get in. Kind of messed up that they would uh, bolt. Up, they would uh, chain up locations people could potentially stay in when housing is such a premium at this point. Unless it's the old man that's misleading me somehow in this situation. I'm looking for a place, something like a pharmaceutical warehouse. Would you know anything about that? I don't really know. There's a small medical center just outside the city limits. I suppose you mean that, right? They built it in a hurry, just knocked it together after the great wave. No one really knows what it's for, but there are vehicles going in and out of the place all the time. Whatever they're doing in there, they're keeping it very secret. Not even my daughter would tell me what goes on inside. Did you say your daughter? Yes. My daughter, my little Uma, she works there as a nurse. I'm afraid she left me. I suppose she got tired of living with a frail, sick old man like me. Because one day she simply left the house, and I haven't seen her since. It's been months now. I think she was right to leave me. These times are hard enough. You don't want to burn yourself with someone like me. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Help me, please! Oh well, hopes are a bit dashed there. Seemed like he might have been useful, because he might have been able to uh, have a direct connection to somebody inside the building I'm trying to get to, but it seems that he has lost all contact. Makes you wonder if she left or if she was taken. It's a poster advertising an insurance company. The slogan is, Tomorrow Comes Today. There's something familiar about this poster. I'd even swear that I actually remember it for the first time since I woke up. I can say that I can remember something from my former life, something hazy, related to this image. But 
But what is it? Is that why the episode's called Tomorrow Comes Today? Did you work at a, uh... Did you work at an insurance company before? Dozens of posters, all shredded, charred, or half torn off. This wall must have been used for advertising before the Great Wave. Hmm. One of them in particular catches my eye. Seems like all the walls might be kind of like that right now. Hello, friend. You look lost. Come over by the fire. It's dying down, but maybe it'll last until curfew. As long as those uniformed psychopaths don't decide to end our little get-together first, of course. Hey, look. One of those magic bracelets from the camp. They say that place is a real hellhole. A kind of living death. So, you've come back from the dead. Do they call you Lazarus? Well, you could put it that way. And it only took a, like an hour, really. It was actually pretty easy. Weird, weird how that works out. You were saying something about a curfew. What time does this start exactly? Well, it depends on the mood of the soldiers in this zone. But you know it's time to go home when they start taking their guns out of their holsters. Today they're extremely jumpy. I don't think it'll be long before they start insulting people and hitting them with their rifle butts. You guys are awfully hard on them. It's just their crude way of showing us affection. Oh, shut up! In any case, you don't have to worry. That bracelet means you don't have to hide from them. You know, that's one of the privileges that comes with it. And you? Do you people have to hide? We try to stay out of their way. The first rule is, be home before curfew. Anyone who isn't, gets dragged off to refugee camp. That's one of the strictest laws the Great Wave imposed upon this city. I'd be... pretty disinclined to even be outside most of the time unless I actually had to be then, if that was a rule, because... Anything could happen on a given day that gets you stuck a little too long outside and then boom your life's over kind of as far as they can tell They don't know what the camps like but since I've been in there. It's not looking great and This guy over here on the right seems to be trying to cope with everything with some sort of dark humor But it's mostly mostly desperate and it's not playing well with his audience And do you know how things are elsewhere? Do you get news from outside? I'm afraid not. With no communications or transportation, and with the army on every corner, we are totally cut off. Who cares anyway? When you don't know from one day to the next if you're going to be alive, there's no time to worry about what happens a hundred, a thousand, or a hundred thousand miles away. I understand. Why are you afraid of the soldiers? I'd heard that things function better here. I don't know where you heard that, friend, but whoever told you that was lying. Here. Things are very ugly and getting uglier every day. Everything's in short supply, water, food, medicine. We have a surplus of just two things. Misery and violence. Life is cheap here, and getting cheaper all the time. Especially since the army took over. The army. I see. And what happened to the other authorities? The politicians? The laws? Those are distant memories from the old world, my dear. Get them out of your head. Because all that collapsed like a house of cards. Since the Great Wave, no one's got any plan, strategy. We're all adrift. He's right. The most reliable thing we have left is what you see around the corner. Armed teenagers in uniform on the streets, on the rooftops, just as scared as we are, or more, and shooting anything that moves. I think our common destiny is to finally die of starvation, of disease, or boredom. I don't know which of the three options I find the most cruel. Who knows? Maybe the most sensible thing is to organize a group excursion and break into Suicide Park. Suicide Park? Don't call it that. It's not funny. That name's as stupid as that hospital they built in such a hurry next to it. It's crazy. The entire city is starving and sick, and the soldiers keep those medical facilities locked up like Fort Knox. Seems like everyone knows that they've got it bad, and everyone thinks that. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that uh, they that the camp would think things are better here, and that these people would think that it's preposterous that the camp would think that it's better here, because nobody has communication, nobody can exactly swap notes. But what good is it having medical facilities if no one can use them? I don't understand. No one does, friend. But that's the way it is. I don't know why anyone would want to go into that building. But I can assure you that they're not going to get treated for anything in there. Not even for a miserable cold. 
Besides, it's a real fortress. The person will be more likely to come out sick from an overdose of gunpowder and lead. You know how it is, dear. There's no cure for love or death. Hey, I like that last phrase. It would make a good opening line for a story. Oh, will you shut up for once, Ramon? Don't pay any attention to him. In the old world, he earned his living writing stories, and he still thinks that all that waste paper might someday be useful after the Great Wave. And in fact, it is. A good deal of that scrap paper is fueling this bonfire right now, dear, so I can consider my literary career to have been worthwhile. As it goes up in flames. Gotta wonder if that line was specifically a reference to an existing story somewhere. Somehow the way that he keeps calling everybody dear, including me, is oddly disconcerting. Did you say Suicide Park? Someone in the camp told me about that place. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together, you and I. When the sun departs from Suicide Park. Yes, I recognize the song. But what the hell is it? Is there really a place with that name? <sighs> yes, it exists. After the Great Wave, and when things were starting to get really ugly here, the weakest among us eased their suffering with a bullet, by overdosing, or by jumping from high places. You know how it is. All those dark stars had a hard time finding a reason to go on living. There was a terrible wave of suicides, and there still is. The problem is at some point a problem arose. How should I put it? A serious logistical problem. Access to drugs and firearms became practically impossible. So the easiest thing was to grab a rope or a belt and go to a suicide park after dark. There was a time when it was hard to find a free branch anywhere in the park. The suicides in the area multiplied at such a rate that the army closed down the park. They said for public health reasons. For months, the only thing blooming in that park were the corpses of the hanged. The place became more like a theme park. Lots of fun for everyone. I told you not to make jokes about that. Don't you have any respect for anything? Of course not. That was one of the many things I lost in the Great Wave. And one of the things I miss the least, believe me. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the company, friend. There's some dark territory. It's the ongoing trope of uh, dark fantasy scenarios to have the, the hanging tree. A massive tree in a public location just covered and, and corpses hanging down, but in this specific case, it was self-inflicted. 